sorry for the conversation. Um, I'm going to talk to you friendly and I'm excited to be here and uh, to talk about community and blockchain. Um, three and a half, for about three years, uh, uh, three years ago, I heard the word blockchain and it pretty much changed my life. Um, along with having a baby at the same time, but they kind of came at this point to rethink in my mind how I would rather do business in the music industry, um, having been in it for 20 years before that point. And I've been frustrated uh, for many reasons, but also encouraged for many other reasons, because there are lots of good people who are in, this, in this industry. So, I'm going to talk to you about um, what this thing called Mycelia, which is really just a vision of a future music ecosystem uh, based around a songs and a creative stage base, um, inspired by blockchain technology, uh, and how it helped me think and to untangle um, and imagine to rethink in a more um, sustainable way. And a flash. So here we go. This is like a play button, um, which has many different. Uh, it's like an augmented play button because I feel like blockchain is augmenting, um, you know, organisations, companies, uh, rethinking things rather than uh, a lot of people use word disruption, and that scares the music industry. I think augmentation is nice. Um, so it's like an augmented play button. Um, this would be able to tell you that when you heard a song. Maybe you might be able to know who wrote all the words, who wrote the um, who played on that record, uh, whether they're being paid fairly, or maybe where, where some of the proceeds might be going, might be going to the digital disaster relief fund. Um, which you can do that. Okay, so here we um, There's a song, that's called, it's called Tiny Demon, and um, I, I wrote this yeah, just after I'd given birth to my first child. Quite traumatic. Um, and uh, as you can see, so this went up on the DSP, you know, Spotify, iTunes, or whatever. And, um, and all you could see, all you can see, really, is just my name and the song title, and if it was connected to a record and when it was released and all that stuff. Um, but here's all the information I would love to share. All this lovely data. Nobody gets to see any of this. And these are, I think, is what's going to enable the flourishing of the music industry by having access to this data to enable services to think imaginatively and build services that we like. It's just simply having the right lyrics attached to a song. There's no way that you can find verified lyrics uh, in one place. Um, so there would be the lyrics. You'd say the publisher and who it's written by. Sometimes songs are written by like 10 people um, and nobody gets to know who they are. Recording credits, um, you know, relatively simple ones. So there's me, I music. I recorded it at my studio and these people came in to play instruments for me. I used the same mastering engineer that I've used for 10 years, except nobody knows because they don't see any credits. Um, and the same mastering place as well. And the product in my studio called Tidal and my studio manager who's like my right hand man. Um, the gear that I use, any time uh, anybody finds out what kind of gear I use uh, and any one of these brands find out they send me more gear. Which is great, it's coming all the way around. I'd like to send it before I put the <laughs> um, it's really, really useful to get you know, more sponsorship, um, you know, better collaborations that make sense um, in terms of branding and stuff. Um, playlist data, just simply putting you know, key, tempo, and things that aren't like pop, rock, reggae, uh, but maybe things like motherhood, colic, sleepless nights, anxiety, newborn baby, um, and happy to you know, do that as well, just on playlist data. Uh, the inspiration, why I wrote the song in the first place, it was a commission by St. but it was entirely about my newborn baby. I managed to grab that in somehow, basically. Um, and then I, and how I wrote the song, and um, how I wrote the song, that. Uh, video, where I've done some live performances, incidentally, this, this woman here, Zoe, Zoe Keating, um, she, she's where I first heard the word blockchain. She was a musician, she was a musician, very dear friend, just about to go to the uh, the blockchain summit on Necker Island as, a, as an entertainer. Um, and, uh, but, you know, very bright woman, and um, it's kind of charging ahead in, in, in the US uh, as well. Did great things there. Um, related audio, related videos, pod, related videos, I won't go into that. Um, and then stems. So if anyone wants to remix, they can have all the stems and the press and stuff. Video credits. So none of this information is anywhere online, but every single song has all this data. Um, who choreographed the video, who's the cinematographer, my partner, actually, David, I think, Michael McGall, etc, etc, artwork credits, uh, thanks. So all these people, and all of the names of these people, um, have other worlds around them. 
kind of we link these together with really create some more fun things. Um, all usage rights, so frustrating to have a record out there and get endless emails about how can I can I put this into my waiting video? Can I um, can I remix this or I have remixed it? I sampled it and then trying to the back chat um, and figure out you know percentages and that stuff later on. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, I just contact info and a uh, license 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 centre. Um, oh my goodness, it's all going on here. Right. So, um, yeah. So what can fans do with it? What can services do with this data? What can brands do with it? What can you know, people who want to use it in the film? What can fans do if they want to put up some new generated content? Because at the moment it's really difficult to do business with songs. There's no data base of songs to show you how to do things. So people just do things because they want to do things and they haven't got time and money to go and find out how to get permission to use the things, so they just use it. Uh, and most times people just use it because, and they don't tell us because they're afraid that we might say no. But actually 99.999% of the time I say yes because I want people to, to do, you know, to, to make other babies with my, with my music and um, and you know, collaborate with other names and do the exist and um, So, and in this, I want to be able to say who to pay. So, how much is that finalist going to get? How much is that? Um, how much might the engineer get, like producer or maybe who want to divide it up? Um, how much and what are their digital audit numbers? So, about two and a half years ago, um, the first song that was generating smart contracts was Tiny Human, and it was an experiment. And, you know, introduced me to the game. Um, and I put up an experiment, here's all this data, do what you like with it, and, it, and uh, an organisation called Ujo Music, uh, part of the consensus game, um, made it the first song to distribute kind of using smart contracts. And at the time it was like £120 worth of downloads, because nobody really had it at the time, it was you know, a month into the um, launch. Uh, but now it's worth £30,000. <laughs> um, so all those people that were like, oh, oh, she's trying to change music industry, she didn't even you know, sell 200 copies. Um, that was the point, the point was, look, it's possible, let's think about the future. Um, because at the moment, this is the situation, if you want to, how you receive money, uh, and it can sometimes take two, three years for money to come, especially if it's like international money. Um, you've got all these people in the middle, um, and so say you're a streaming company, you have to send, this is just in the UK, so if you're a streaming company, you have to send your money. Um, first of all, you, you send all the songs data to the Performing Rights Society, then the Performing Rights Society goes, okay, those are our songs, we'd like to give you to give us money on those songs, please. And then they go, okay, and then they pay the money. So it happens three times. There's no like, central place for them to just acknowledge who, pay, who owns what, who has permissions to do what with. Um, this is just in the UK, so each streaming company has to literally pay 200 organisations for one artist around the world. That's crazy. Why don't we just have one connected with those ones? Um, so there we go. There's all kinds of other things that I'd like to change in the process, but we won't go into that because that's too long. Um, that's the really thing that I'd like to do with. Um, so there we go. Imagine that song. Well, I call it a score. Um, so this is the score of the song. It has all this data in it, all the licensing information, all the musicians, all that line of note stuff from the past. And war and, uh, and tags and all kinds of things, and um, links to all the musicians. Um, that one song, wouldn't that be amazing to have that? And then think about um, how somebody might want, how as an artist might want somebody to be able to interact with that. I would like to have things like the number of streams, maybe the regions or countries they were in, roughly the age group could be useful to help you know, lead services get this data anyway, so if you pass that on. Um, the data used, uh, you know, did they like the song? How much was received. So then we can really start to know where uh, and how to, to, uh, to what, what to invest in in the future as an artist, as an entrepreneur, because at the moment nobody will touch you in the barge pole if they want to invest in you, because all the money, uh, or all of the intermediaries make it very, very hard for an artist to know where in the world your song was played, how many times it was played, who are your champions. We don't know that. Um, and so if you want to invest outside of the music industry, you don't get any money in because you don't know when the money's going to come back at all. But when we clean up the value chain, then we can start to really put something there. And, and fans can become your investors and your patrons, um, and, and it really starts to ease up on the labels too, because at the moment they are the only ones who can invest, so they have to 
pay these large amounts of money up front. Okay. Um, so now imagine all of my songs, there's maybe 150 of them, um, and then attached to that what I call the creative password. So anytime I go into my work with my name, it's mentioned in a song or in anything, it can link you back to what I call the creative passport. And this is the song, this is the creative database. And in here is my biography, my tour dates, my quotes, my brands that I, I work with, my ethos, charity alignments, and all that kind of stuff. What, what musicians actually inspire me, rather than what iTunes thinks inspire me to me. Um, many years, maybe they think I'm inspired by. Um, and then one of my interests, all this data could be really useful for a brand wanting to find an artist to do some work for, or somebody wanting to put together a festival with artists who are like-minded or share the same team, or a charity that, you know, offers or whatever, and want to, want to find out what, what artists support them, they can put together some, something like that. Um, so now imagine all of the artists on the planet, and all of the songs on the planet, and this is what I call my senior. Um, this is like the connective tissue for what's above ground, which are the services, like the iTunes and the labels and these people. These are, the, these are the services, these are the mushrooms of the trees, obviously. And then under, under, under the ground is the mycelium. This is actually in, in the real world, it's the largest organism on the planet, I'm called mycelium. And they stretch 10, 20 kilometers wide. And they're what are beneath the, the canopies of um, a tree in the rainforest. Like the, 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 the tissue that connects them together and they share data. And I think it's a great uh, metaphor for what the music industry could be to help these sustainable flourishing ecosystems sharing data to the, to the industry above the ground, um, and breathing out oxygen to the fans. Um, so I've kind of given you an idea, but yeah, one of them being around um, wanting to find the next you know, corona advert, so it might discover that X band and X artist over there, and this person over here, who maybe you've never heard of, and they might have never released you know, anything that you've heard, but you can search this database and maybe you, you would pay a service, you would, it's like a business to business. So the business would pay the creative passports service um, to search through this database to give uh, somebody who wants to find a new song or a new artist for their brand and then search this database. And that database would then pay five tokens, perhaps, um, the artists who generated the data that they use. Uh, so it comes back into the ecosystem rather than stays in the services. Um, there we go, how do we get that ethical, commercial, technical standards? Um, I was trying to think, maybe we could all get the industry behind this, and then I realised that was an impossibility. Um, so we came up with this concept of creative passports, because that's what we can do, that's the bit the artists can do. We can generate the data that currently doesn't exist. And when, and um, I know it's going to happen, uh, when an open global music database does emerge from the ashes, um, then we can link into it and we can, we can also into that too our creative passports and connect to the existing organisation, enabling us to work with legacy works, um, but also enable us to bring in other revenue outside of just streaming um, by way of having this added data um, that people will, I imagine, pay for uh, to build services up on that. Um, so there we go, creative passport, there's my biography, contacts, messages, um, all the ideas, all the organisations, so literally be able to connect up to them, you would see them highlight on my creative passport, so it's a good promotion for them too. If you're a new artist, you might go to my my creative passport and go, I wonder what image of Pete's done for her business. And then you would see uh, all this data and you'd be able to tick the boxes that I've ticked and have, have a similar service. Um, accounts, you know, all, that stuff. Uh, all my skills, some of these are looking for specific skills. Um, it basically enables anyone that's not known to the, to the world to have a look in, into getting a job maybe as a guitarist because they realise that they're actually just on their own. They've had some pretty good uh, reviews. I've never heard of them, but they've had some good reviews on this service. So it's kind of like a marketplace too. Um, and yeah, because I imagine like, for example, you know, Hurricane, you know, bigger than the news, one coming our way around in the next um, day, probably you know, you know, you know. To be able, as an artist, to be able to generate money, so anytime somebody was playing my music, to be able to, on that day, be like, okay, this is something I care about, this is a country that I've been to, that you know, I really care about these people, and I, and I want to, all of my money from all of my songs on this day, I want to go to this disaster really fun. Um, and to be able to have somebody to visualise that, so that you're reaching out to your fan base, 
to anyone that's listening to your music and spreading your like your like an umbilical cord to your songs so that it doesn't just stop the relationship when you release a song currently, you just release a song and off it falls off the you've got no idea what happens to it really. Um, you know, different organisations trying to claim money from it if they've got their data correct. Um, and uh, and it's a very distant relationship we have, but if there's a way that the song is always linked and always receiving information to and from, um, then we can start to really kind of speak out and reach out and share. Uh, and hopefully, you know, rather than somebody putting together a really expensive concert that costs a million pounds to put together, putting onto the disaster relief fund, we just make it really easy for people to, to donate. Um, blah, 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 payments, and uh, that's why I'm going to stop there. Yeah.